Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name is Jacob and today I'm going to be taking you through my next project which will be modifying and uh, generally just upgrading and making better this bootleg Bandai Vinyl 1984 Godzilla figure. Uh, you may have seen I have a couple of videos on my channel already about this guy. So he is, you know, a, a bootleg, a recast of the original uh, Bandai Memorial Box figure of the 1984 design. Now, uh, basically, to sum up, this, this figure, the sculpt is beautiful it's one of the best 1984 figures you know definitely in this scale definitely in this price range because uh, the the original version of this figure the the official bandai M memorial box one is really hard to get it's really expensive but it's a beautiful figure and this one is basically a spot-on recast of that but the paintwork is god-awful as you can see here and the thing about bootlegs is I like to treat them like basically like just like model kits that you got to upgrade because generally they don't come you know made very well at, at least the paintwork tends to be lacking on a lot of them so this one in particular well, hopefully it'll go and focus pretty quick there we go beautiful you can see beautiful sculpt and detail work all round but the you know, look at the paint on the dorsal spines for example it's really just w thick white paint slopped on there really lazy the claws aren't that bad but they could use touching up and I'm sorry the image is a little bit overexposed I just got a bright lamp on it at the moment but it's the best I can do from this angle but well the main thing that I'm going to be doing before that is if we look at the mouth now typical uh, t typically in come on get in focus uh, in typical Bandai vinyl fashion, his teeth are kind of merged together with a block of plastic behind them. Uh, and they're just sort of like slightly indented and then paint is dry brushed over them and that's how you get Bandai vinyl teeth. However, what I want to do is I want to actually cut in there and remove all that excess plastic and remove the tongue part as well and re-sculpt that in to be far more natural and realistic looking. So I'm, that's what I'm going to be doing now. I'm actually going to uh, get my scalpel knife and I'm going to be going in there and gently just cutting around all the teeth and trying to get rid of that plastic. And then I'm going to use, if I have it on hand, where the hell did I put it? Oh, it's way over there. I have some epoxy putty which is like a a two-part epoxy based uh, sort of sculpt sculpting clay like material that basically just turns into like a solid plastic like substance after a couple of hours after you mix it together and that's what I'm going to use to re-sculpt in some details now if for whatever reason uh, my uh, cutting job isn't successful with these teeth and they look pretty bad uh, what I'll do is I'll remove all of them and re-sculpt the teeth from scratch I actually have a bunch of like little, um, can't really see it very well, but they're they're little um, bone colored. I made these because I was making a different Godzilla figure, um, things out of oven bake uh, translucent oven bake clay, and I have some really tiny like little slivers that would be perfect to use as the teeth as well. So I might just embed those in the epoxy putty and form the teeth that way. But I'm gonna try and just cut it out first because that's the easiest thing. So. I will update you uh, once I, I get to that, but for you guys, through the power of editing, it'll be instantaneous, so you can see my following update, and yeah. Alright, so there we go. I've spent some time just cutting away the excess material. As you can see, I kind of lost some of his teeth there. Um, I will be replacing those with uh, teeth that I will re-sculpt, but hopefully... That gives you some idea of what it looks like without the plastic between his teeth. Um, it'll look better once it's all finished and painted. So, getting focus, okay. Uh, so, I will do that now. Um, what I'm going to do uh, before then is we're going to use this stuff. This is called epoxy sculpt. It's a type of epoxy putty or epoxy clay or whatever people want to call it you can see it there it's basically a two-part mixture uh, one part looks like this the other part looks like this again sorry for my lighting it's really a bit weird maybe if I just turn it off for this bit yeah there we go um, 
And what we do is we get an equal part of each, we mix it together, and then I'm going to stuff that in his mouth and re-sculpt the inside of his mouth and some of those missing teeth and just make it all clean and nice. And when that sets, it takes about three hours, I think, to set. What I'll do is I'll prime him and get him ready for painting. So I think my next update uh, will probably be when that is um, done, or at least when I've sculpted in his tongue and stuff. So I'll show you that, and then the next one will probably be dark by then, when we actually get around to painting him. But we'll see. Anyway, I'll, I'll get to it, and I'll keep you guys updated. Alright, so here he is with the inner mouth all sculpted in. I didn't do the world's most stellar job, but it should at least do. Sorry again about the lighting and everything. Maybe, I don't know, how is it without the lamp? Very dark, but hopefully that'll... Come on, get in focus. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what it looks like. Looks really messy now because like some of the teeth are half painted and some of the paint's been scraped off and some of it sculpted in. All that sort of stuff. But it will look a lot better once the epoxy putty sets and once I paint it all up. That should be when it really comes to life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this to set and then we're going to get to painting as I'm really excited to see what this guy will look like once he's fully painted. I think it'll look really cool. I'm tempted to, like, I don't know, I'm thinking whether to to actually, like, uh, you know, make, make him seamless if no gaps and, like, put those together, but I don't really feel like it. I'm feeling a bit lazy, so I'll probably just leave him like this, but he will have the the more sophisticated um, teeth and mouth. So that's at least going to be a little bit of a bonus for this guy. Hey guys, so here he is, freshly primed and all put back together. Uh, I didn't prime him like super, uh, what's the word, super exactly. So hopefully he goes into focus. You can see he's pretty much all spray painted black now. Uh, there's the, the inside of his mouth. You can kind of see his teeth. There, they're a little bit more sharper than before, a little bit more nicer looking. And yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the process of painting this guy up. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see how he looks like once he's all painted properly and not like the really cheap ass bootleg toy that he was originally. Uh, so the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some uh, Tamiya acrylic paints. These are alcohol-based acrylic paints. They are designed for model kits, so they will work no problem on a plastic vinyl figure like this, especially one that's been primed. Vinyl can be a bit iffy with certain paints. Definitely don't use the same sorts of paints that you'd use for, you know, painting on paper or canvases or that sort of stuff. Or That paint is not designed for this kind of work. Um, that's something to bear in mind, so um, most paints that are just called acrylics, uh, just on their own, and they're like, you know, you get them really cheap and they're more sort of thick and gluggy, that's the kind of paint used for canvases. Don't use that. Uh, that'll just scratch right off. What you want is, um, it doesn't have to be this brand at all, but like, you know, Tamiya acrylics. So again, sorry about my lighting. At least this is the brand I use. There's a whole bunch of other uh, brands that'll do. Just make sure you're using a paint designed for, say, a plastic model kit or something like that if you're unsure. If you know what you're doing, then you know what you're doing. But if you d don't know what you're doing, just use something that's designed for plastic. And, yeah, and have fun with it. The great thing about... Um, these paints in particular being alcohol-based is that I what I use for thinning these paints... Uh, to, and watering them down and cleaning the brushes is actually, uh, what's it called? It's not like window cleaner spray bowl stuff. Windex. Yeah, I use Windex for actually thinning these paints, and it works great. So I will uh, begin the process of doing that. Uh, like I said, they didn't prime him very exactly. There's still lots of white bits showing through, but the idea really was just to give it a thin coat of paint just so the, the proper colored paint actually sticks on to the figure but this is really cool you can actually see the really beautiful sculpts that this thing has with none of that cheap gluggy paint uh, that they used uh, that just made them look kind of ugly on it so yeah I'm 
really starting to like this guy. I mean, I did it from the beginning, but yeah. I'll stop talking now. I'll get to it and I'll cut back in a little bit to share my progress with you guys. So, it is now the next morning, and here is a figure all nicely painted up. So, I spent quite a while just taking my time uh, listening to music and just on YouTube while painting this guy up. And I'm really happy with the results. He looks so much better than he did when he looked like this. Um, so you can see the difference. Hopefully the color is coming out as naturally as possible. I think he's a little bit more uh, bluish looking in, in what I'm seeing on my uh, monitor of him than he is in life. But still pretty close. No, nevertheless, you can still make out the differences, and this guy's the messed up tail, so it's making this comparison a little difficult. But, I'll show him here. So the original one here, uh, just had like, lightly gold painted eyes, the mouth was, you know, all blocky and stuff like that, and the sloppy paint work on the dorsal spines here and all that, but still a great sculpt. So he took advantage of that great sculpt. And we did all of this, and this is how he turned out. So what I did is I primed him, of course, in black. And then I dry brushed him, well, I painted him with a, 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 another black just to really uh, finish off that priming job just by hand. I did that in some areas. But then what I did is I went over him with a gray paint. Again, I was using those Tamiya paints. I believe the one that I used was... Might have been this one? This one's called Field Blue, but it is like a type of gray. So I dry brushed him all over his body, and I did that with a sponge. So we got a sponge here, and I just put paint on the sponge, and then I, you know, you, you dab it over his body. And I also spent quite some time, uh, you know, doing the inside of his mouth here, hopefully. You can get him in front of the camera a little bit. There we go, you can get a nice little look-see closer into his mouth there. And that's what his nice new uh, teeth and mouth look like, all painted up. And I think they turned out really nice. And he looks so much better with his eyes painted in properly as well. That's one thing that I'm really happy with, because he was lacking a lot of personality back when he just had his eyes painted like this. I mean, it still looks pretty cool. Like, he looks only really menacing in the, you know, this version, but it just looks cheap with all the rest of the paint. And this looks so much more accurate. So, just put that guy back there. Nice close-up look. All the scaling work. The, the scales really uh, come to life with some of that dry brushing that I did over them. So I was really trying to keep the, like, in some parts of the, like, the belly there, I put a bit too much gray, and it kind of got in between the cracks, because I was kind of trying to keep the dark paint uh, still, um, still in the cracks, so it helps bring out the scales. So some parts are, you know, it's not perfectly done, but it turned out pretty good, I think. This is... Body, and I'm really happy with the way the spines came out. I used sort of a bony color for them, so they turn out really nice. Again, I think my image is a little bit more blue than he is in life, uh, so I do apologize about that. It's just the auto white balance feature on my camera is a bit iffy. Um, but you get a good idea, good sense of what he looks like. Just around. Yeah, I love the details. The, the dry brushing, brushing also really brought out all the details on his face as well. You can see his claws here. I tried really hard to kind of blend the colors, so that did take quite a while, especially like on the bony claws and on the spines. I also used the, the uh, sponge on the spines a little bit as well. And I, overall, I'm really happy with how he turned out, so I'm just going to move him back a little bit. And we can compare him again. Whoops. There we go. So, we can compare him to some other figures. For example, uh, I wish I had the original Memorial Box figure to compare this guy to, but uh, I don't have that one. But we can compare him, like I, like I was showing you guys, to the unpainted version, the unmodified version, and we can compare him 
to the NECA version, which, oh dear god, this is one of my least favorite figures. Like, it does have some okay parts, like, if you actually take a look at the faces, they are similar. And you can definitely see that effort was somewhat put in to get the face right, but just the way with... I don't know... He just looks so off. The face, in particular, looks kind of really... Uh, I don't even know. It's very subtle. But, like I said, this design is really hard to get right. And this Bandai vinyl actually does it really well. It's a really good representation of this design, but the NECA one, and especially if you just look at the body and the claws and, like, the hips, they're just so out of proportion, and the tail is measly on this thing, and the spines are shitty as well. Um, yeah, this this guy turned out a lot better than the NECA figure. I'm just gonna say, say that. But yeah. There we can get a nice comparison of the spines, and they they look so much better on this one. I know they they're re-releasing this guy with improved spines, but it still didn't look as good as this one, and it still has the body and like look at the, the the feet on this one. For some reason, the two middle claws on each foot are a lot bigger than the outer ones, and they're all like long and weird looking, and really spindly and thin. But then you look at this guy, and he has a lot more accurate looking feet. There. This is what the suit looked like. Like, I've compared them to photos. This is so much more accurate. And even even if we bring in, like, the X-Plus figure, for example. He's right here. Very big, big figure. Sorry, I'm just crowding the camera now. Move him back. You can see... Yeah, this is this is a lot more accurate to, to this... Um, to the suit as well, of course. It being an X-Plus figure, I'll just kind of... Show them off there. So, yeah. Anyway. Overall, I think this guy turned out really well. I'm really happy with uh, this modding project. This is a... I was intending on doing this with this figure from um, when I first bought him. So, I'm actually glad I finally got around to it. Because I have a bunch of other uh, projects that I'm in the middle of. I'm still painting my uh, 64 third-party King Ghidorah figure. And I'm still... Um, I have a, a GMK Godzilla that uh, I've been sculpting for a while out, out of, like, a, a, what's it called? Super Sculpey Clay, and that thing's starting to dry out and crumble away, so I really need to bake that and finish it. But um, I will get to those, hopefully. But just before we close off, I'll kind of compare this guy to some other figures, just size-wise, as we would normally in a normal, um, whatchamacallit, review. So here we have an actual decent NECA figure, that being the, uh, is it 62? I think it's 62. And he is a huge figure compared to this guy. This guy is just chunky. Uh, but yeah, you can you can definitely see these are two really good representations of these suits. You can also bring in a, another NECA figure. This is one of, again, another NECA figure. I think it looks hideous. <laughs> and that is the, uh, the original Heisei suit design, which was really lazily sculpt, sculpted. Luckily, his mouth open. There you go. Yeah, it's a, it's really meh looking. But the, luckily they're putting out another one that'll be a lot better in the near future, I think. I'm bringing in a Bandai Vinyl, another one of those. Here's a 1954 Bandai Vinyl. So we get um the 54 next to the 84 here. And they, they scale up really well, and you can definitely see... Uh, you know, the, the the influences of both designs on one another. Uh, the 84 is a much more accurate figure, I think. The 54 Bandai is a little bit lazy. They did a, a bit of a lazy job, but they did improve it with the very expensive um, premium Bandai vinyl figure. They're also a very big one, which is this one here. They did definitely improve <laughs> the sculpt, but these, these two, whoops, don't scale up very well at all. But... Detail-wise, they are both uh, pretty pretty comparable. Um, I really, really wish they would put out a Monster Arts of this guy, because I love the 84 design. It's a really popular design, a really unique design. It's kind of got elements of both the Heisei Godzilla's and the Showa Godzilla's kind of mixed together. It's a really intermediate sort of suit, 
Also got unique details like the the way the the larger spine is almost down near the hips rather than being about here, and just the really unique eyebrows and the fa more rounded face facial expressions and the type of scaling and all that sort of stuff. It's a very um, very uh, sort of unique design, and I'd love for Monster Arts to put out a version of this because I mainly collect Monster Arts. And it's kind of one that I think a lot of people are waiting for. So yeah, thank you guys for sticking with me throughout this little video project. Um, I hope you liked and enjoyed, and I'd love to um, hear if you guys are planning any similar projects or anything like that, or if you know any other figures that I should uh, give the same treatment to. Fair warning, I have no intentions of actually messing with an official Bandai vinyl. Those are like, you know, I collect those. They're like collector's pieces, even if they are lazily painted and stuff like that and are regularly accessible. I still don't really want to mess with an, an official Bandai vinyl, but if it's a bootleg like this, then I, you know, I, I like to go to town on the, on those. I feel no guilt or, or you know, regret or anything like that because they're already, already bootlegs and they're perfect for treatment like this and I think you know even though this was a particularly expensive uh, boot, bootleg figure it it was very worth it to, to get a figure you know in the end that looks like this which looks a lot better than the NECA figure and is kind of a good um, placeholder until Monster Arts actually releases a version of the 1984 design so yeah, that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and or subscribe, and I'll keep you up to date with my future projects. And um, yeah, may all your vinyl be radiated vinyl. Over and out.